His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, happy Mother's Day to everyone. If you have not yet called, text, stuck a card in the mail, remember uh, On the Run is open and Walmart is 24 hours a day. Uh, so uh, you can you can like send something on Amazon and Mom will know you sent it today. And know that you just thought of it today. So uh, be sure and call, text mom, tell her you love her and appreciate it if you can. Uh, and uh, we will remember moms in our sermon and this service today in many different ways. The beautiful flowers today are given by Sam Ahern uh, in honor of his uh, beloved wife, Terry, who graduated to the church triumphant a year ago, a week ago and in honor and celebration of all the moms and ladies in the church. So uh, Sam wanted to celebrate a joyful memory and not the sad one, and we thank him for these beautiful flowers today uh, in honor of Terry. Mentioned last week that Terry was uh, about to be a grandparent at any moment, and it was Monday, right? Uh, his son Terry and his wife had a baby boy named Lennon Paul, uh, as in Lennon and McCartney, get it, Lennon, Paul, uh, almost nine pounds and just short of 20, ounce, 20 inches, so a big baby, so congratulations to, uh, to the new grandparents, and uh, we're glad that mom, baby, and dad are all happy and healthy and well. A uh, couple of announcements. We are starting a new book in our Iron Men, Iron Ladies. Uh, if you don't have this book, if you're going to attend, we have like the last 10 copies of this that are available in the world. So if you're going to attend, uh, there's two up here and there's like eight more on my desk. Pick one up, read the introduction and the first chapter on uh, Chesterton. A uh, fantastic chapter. You don't need to have read Chesterton to, to get a lot from it, but it will make you want to read Chesterton. And most of you have probably experienced Chesterton by watching the Father Browns on uh, PBS. Uh, Chesterton wrote all those great books that have become those great series that we enjoy so much. These are nine, nine names that belong on your bookshelf. Uh, and uh, it's Tolkien, it's C.S. Lewis, it's Woodhouse, Minchin, Wilson, Robinson, Kaplan. Um, it's a great list. Uh, when I was at Wofford, we had a January term in college, which was kind of like Christmas break extended through January. It's a little bit light. Uh, you took a class out of your major in pass-fail. Most of the kids that had money traveled. I was not asking Dad for money to travel. That was a quick no to that. Uh, but uh, I fenced one year, made the fencing team, and then I took drawing the right side of the brain, and I learned to be creative by writing with my left hand, and all this kind of quirky stuff. And then my last interim I took, you had to take three out of four years, uh, I took with Dr. George Martin, who's head of the English department, one of my favorite professors, and it was called Books You Ought to Have Read. And you read about 10 different books and talked about them. And the idea was these are the books that you need to have read to sound semi-intelligent at a cocktail party. <laughs> these are the books you ought to have read to sound intelligent at a potluck supper. So uh, if you'd like to join us for the first time, pick up a book on my desk or here. I'd uh, love to have you a part of this. We meet in person in the fellowship hall with social distance and windows open, but we also continue to have a Zoom option if you can't be with us or uh, you're away uh, during this time and still in Florida or Atlanta, uh, you can Zoom in with us. Um, our food distribution is next Saturday, will be our May food distribution. <coughs> Continue to collect your old plastic bags, your grocery bags, your shopping bags. Uh, we need them. We ran out last month and that was the first time in a long time that we ran out of plastic bags. You don't have to bring them in the church. You can come by any time, day or night. We have bins, in other words, garbage cans for plastic bags under the little covered porch of the small barn on the right. When you come up the parking lot, just stick them in there and we will put them to use on Saturday. If you can be here to help us, we always need help. We are still wearing masks. We are doing our best social distance, but the 
the risk outside are incredibly minimal and a majority of us, a uh, far majority of us are vaccinated now here in our church. So uh, we are very safe and uh, you can come at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll help you uh, find a station to help and sort, bag. Uh, if you like to do aerobic exercise, you can push the shopping buggy. If you want strength building, you can load into the cars. We've got something for everybody, no membership fee required. We will have probably about 150 cars to 175 cars about 500 individuals will come through and get about two and a half, three weeks worth of food. So we hope you can be here. It's an important ministry of our church. Uh, we probably give away about $1.2 million worth of food in wholesale costs, not retail each year. So we enjoy doing it. It's hard work. But it's the best two hours, two and a half hours you will spend all month long making a difference for our neighbors in need. All the rest of your announcements are in your bulletin. Uh, you can mark it and uh, uh, look forward to seeing you each and every week as we slowly return to a more and more normal routine of life. Now, before the children's sermon, if you will, greet those around you with a social distance wave, elbow bump. You know how we do nowadays. Please greet those around you with the right hand of Christian Fellowship. Good Sometimes I get better at that. Sometimes it's a bit of a stretch. Today's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, I have little Debbie honey buns. Uh, so if anybody didn't have breakfast yet, or if anybody's really bold, you can pick one up and give this to your mom on the way home and say, Mom, this is for you. Uh, honey buns because probably the first person that ever called you honey outside of a Waffle House was your mother. <laughs> That's the idea. My children's sermon is, who are you going to call? Now, if you're kind of my age group, you know where that comes from, right? Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters right. Ray Parker Jr. and that great song, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Now, with Mother's Day, I got thinking about who you call when you're in trouble. So think about this for a second. When you were little and you fell down and skinned your knee, who are you going to call? Mom, right? Uh, when you got a little bit older and you didn't make the team, who are you going to call? Mama. Come on, the 9 o'clock was better than you. <laughs> Not to be competitive, but y'all have had breakfast. They've not even had breakfast. All right. Uh, first crush, first love, breaks your heart, who are you going to call? Mama. Mama, that's right. In college, need money, who are you going to call? Dad. <laughs> For some of us, mama was a better path to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, first time you're a parent and you've brought home your child and they're crying, there's a fever, something's going on, who are you going to call? Mom. Mama. Exactly. Our moms answer the call all the time. And today we're going to think a little bit about the things that our mother said and how important they are and how that shapes and informs us who we are in both positive and negative ways sometimes. We are going to think about the Proverbs uh, where Solomon writes, Do not reject your mother's teaching, for they are a fair garland for your head and pendants for your neck. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty merciful God, we give you thanks that you watch over us as a loving parent. <clears throat> And with that, we know and appreciate and give thanks this day as our nation celebrates Mother's Day for our mothers, for the love that they gave us in bringing us into this world and for their care and nurture of us. We give thanks also for uh, our stepmothers, our grandmothers, our aunts who 
or like mothers to us, for wise wisdom in the classroom and in the workplace for women who have continued to shape and to impact our lives. Lord, we give thanks for each and every mother, for their life, for their work, for each and every woman, for their witness and their perspective, their time and their talent and their energy. Lord, we pray this day for our world and our nation. We know that we continue to be a world in the midst of struggles and challenges of epic proportions. There is a pandemic that is ongoing. There is unemployment that remains steady. There are troop builds up along borders far away that could impact everyone at any moment in day. Lord, we pray for the leaders of the world to remember the words of their mothers, to remember how to say they're sorry, to remember the importance of giving thanks, of appreciation, of service, and of sacrifice. Lord, we pray these things in the wondrous name of Jesus, who gave so much of himself for us and taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue to do our offering a little different in COVID. We are not passing plates, touching everything. We are using beautiful spray-painted buckets at the back and front door. Um, you can uh, use those after the service. We are having a very special offertory uh, musical reflection today, and it is one that uh, I remember well from my childhood, very well from my childhood. I remember it as one of my mother's favorite songs because I would hear her singing it. My mother trained professionally and was a wonderful soprano and would sing all the time in the house, doing dishes, folding clothes, maybe to escape the noise of all of us. She would sing great songs, and this song is one she would always sing, which then made me start thinking, was it one of her favorites, or was it my dad's favorite, who as a minister would call on my mom often to sing in church? I texted my mom last night and said, is it your favorite or is it dad's favorite? She says, it's one of our both favorites. And she said, Ethel Waters used to sing it at Billy Graham Crusades. I did not know that. Whenever I hear this song, I am in Orlando, Florida, in our subdivision off Lake Conway. My mom is in the kitchen, and the refrigerator is avocado green. <laughs> I've asked Terry if he will sing this for us today, and he surprised me at nine. Not only is he singing it, he's singing it a cappella. I hope you enjoy his eyes on the sparrow. <laughs> Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is? My portion, my constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Then I sing because I'm happy, I sing 
because I'm free, for his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me whenever I am tempted. Whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him from care he sets me free his eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me his eyes on the sparrow Then I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the little sparrow. And I know. to work and to be rewarded for our work and our time, and we pray that you will guide and direct us as we use these gifts for your service and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. amen. Son of David, King of Israel, for learning about wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for gaining instruction in wise dealing, righteousness, justice, and equity, to teach shrewdness to the simple, knowledge and prudence to the young. Let the wise also hear and gain in learning, and the discerning acquire skill to understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my child, your father's instruction, 
And do not reject your mother's teaching, for they are a fair garland for your head and pendants for your neck. This is the word of our Lord. Right. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> During training at the police academy, a lecture was given on the importance of the law. And that regardless, regardless of emotions, relationships, the law must be enforced equally, fairly, without prejudice, impartially, no matter what. To make his point, the commanding officer asked a recruit, a trainee, a hypothetical question. He asked, what would you do if you had to arrest your mother? The recruit thought about it for a moment and answered forcefully, sir, I would call for backup, sir. <laughs> Today is Mother's Day. Today is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to everyone. Now here is where I annually insert my legal disclaimer as instructed by my legal counsel, Steve Gilliam. While not everyone is a mother, not everyone wanted to be a mother or could be or chose to be, had the opportunity to be today, we are celebrating all the women in our lives who have mothered us and give thanks that we all had a mother who loved and did her best for us always. Our scripture today comes from Proverbs. Proverbs, a book maybe you forget about, maybe you skip over, you kind of pick out your favorite Psalms and then jump to the Gospels, but Proverbs is filled with wonderful things and loaded with wisdom. It is one of the books in the Bible that are referred to as wisdom literature. Now, try seeing if they have that on Amazon sometime, the category of wisdom literature. I'd be curious what would be there. This includes the book of Job, which is filled with wisdom, if nothing else, to make you appreciate no matter how bad life is, it is not as bad as Job's. The Psalms, now not all the Psalms are technically wisdom literature, but Psalms as a whole is considered wisdom literature and many of them uh, provide that. Others are for worship, for uh, ascent and different types of things, lament and prayer. Then there is, of course, Ecclesiastes and then the Song of Songs, the Song of All Songs, the Song of Solomon, a love poem between a bride and a groom all part of wisdom literature. They are written to edify, to build us up, to teach. They include important wisdom. They teach truth to guide and direct us toward a better way of life. And they also serve to warn and protect us from going down the wrong path. Solomon was considered the wisest person to ever live. We are told how that happened in the first chapter of Second Chronicles. Verse 7 that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered God, You have shown great kindness to David, my father, and have made, him, made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed, for you have made me king over a people who are as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people for who is able to govern this great people of yours. God said to Solomon, since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, possessions, or honor, nor for the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king, therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given you and also I will give you wealth and possessions and honor, such as no king who has, who was before you or ever had and none after you will have. So this book, this book of Proverbs is from the person with the greatest wisdom, writing to their child, writing to their child. Now, to be fair, the text says to my son, but we know that Solomon had sons and daughters one of the most interesting things in it is that Solomon doesn't just write this from a father's perspective. He was the wisest person that ever lived, after all. He knows his wife will likely read this when he is gone. He is writing to give wisdom to his child for after he's gone. And he very wisely writes not just from a father's perspective. And that is in a very patriarchal, tribal society. He writes with balanced instruction from his perspective as a father, but also from his wife's, telling the child to remember 
what we taught you, to hear your mother's words, and to think about as your mother taught you how to act, live, and do. The wisest person that ever lived, the wisest person that ever lived, Solomon, shows that as he writes almost alternating verses, as your father said, as your mother said. He's writing a long letter to help, to help his children. He's writing them to help them to remember what they were taught. He is taking, talking both in the positive, to remember to be good, and he also addresses things almost alternating verses in the negative of why not to be bad, what to look out for, what to avoid. Solomon isn't writing theoretically either. Remember, he is the second-born child of David and Bathsheba. Remember them? I once did a Wednesday night Bible study long ago and titled it, Splish Splash, I Was Taking a Bath. <laughs> he surely has heard, he surely witnessed, he has experienced the hardships, the hurts, the lasting impact of choices. He writes in both the voice of a father and a mother, and he writes not as one who is perfect by any means, but instead maybe as one who has made more mistakes and is sharing that to say, here are some ways I messed up, ways for you to avoid making the same mistakes I did. The title of my sermon today is a phrase you all know, Mama Said. Mama Said. Now, there can be many ways to say that phrase. Now, as a child to a younger brother or sister who is about to do something they aren't supposed to, it's said like this, Mama Said you can't. Or Mama Said don't. To a teenager with friends heading out to a place or to do something that they know better, it is a voice inside their head that said, Mama said, don't you ever. To a young first-time parent, it's a reflective moment. It is that moment of panic after you have brought the baby home and all of a sudden they're crying and you don't know what to do. I remember that moment so clearly when we brought our firstborn daughter home, Stuart, and my parents were there at the house and it was this moment and yay, we brought her home and there were pink balloons and some sort of stork sign in the yard and everybody was there for a moment and then they all left. And I remember looking utterly panicked in that we don't know what we're doing. We're not qualified. Having a baby is the only thing that you can do that there are no prerequisite training and certification and it's the most important job there is. In that reflective moment of panic, Maybe even through tears, the child has a fever, has fallen, is bleeding. You think about that moment. Maybe it's later in life. Maybe it's when they're teenagers, you know, somewhere after 13 for girls, somewhere after 16 for boys in a car. And that moment that they did something that was wrong, not appropriate, illegal, immoral, or illicit. And you heard in your voice, your mama said she hoped that you would grow up and have children just like you. <laughs> there are many songs about mamas, many songs about mamas. Now my instinct was right away, the sweet spot of songs about mamas got to be out of Nashville and country music, but I was surprised. The list of songs about mama are overwhelming. There are very few about dad, by the way. I checked just to see. A song for mama. A title from Boys to Men. Anybody here know Boys to Men? Three, four, okay, all right. A Mama Song by Carrie Underwood. The Best Day by Taylor Swift. In My Daughter's Eyes by M Martina McBride. This one surprised me. Tupac, the, the king of gangster rap, had a song called Dear Mama. I'm sure it said, I'm sorry for something somewhere along the way. <laughs> Christina Aguilera, oh mother. Elvis Presley, mama like the roses. Somebody's hero, Jamie O'Neill. I hope you dance, Leanne Womack. I will always love my mama by the intruders. I think they were a 60s group. This one surprised me almost as much as Tupac and almost as much as the next two. 
Turn to You, a Mother's Day dedication by the one and only Justin Bieber. I don't believe that I even said Justin Bieber from the pulpit. <laughs> but I'm about to say another one that surprises me. Although he does lead worship on Sundays, Hey Mama by Kanye West. And then there's Mama, I'm Coming Home. Anybody know who wrote that? Anybody? This is going to shock you. Ozzy Osbourne. Can you believe it? <laughs> Even Ozzy had a mama. Even Ozzy had a mama. Your mother should know the Beatles. Then there's Mama Mama Said Gonna Knock You Out by LL Cool J. For those of you older than me, he is on NCIS, I believe. You don't know that he was a rapper before that. Josh Groban, You Raised Me Up. And then there's Mama Don't Forget to Pray for Me by Diamond Rio, Mother and Child Reunion by Paul Simon, Mama Told Me Not to Come, Three Dog Night, and the inspiration for the sermon, a title from 1961, which was the year before I was born, by the way, the Shirelles who sang Mama Said. Do you know that tune, the chorus at least? Mama said, there'll be days like this, there'll be days like this. My mama said, mama said, mama said. Then there's mama said, there'll be days like this, there'll be days like this. My mama said, mama said, mama said. <laughs> Music, poetry, novels, movies, movies. Throw mama from the train. <laughs> I told nine o'clock y'all would get that so much better. Than that. <clears throat> Television. Television. Think of all the memorable mothers from television, from Mrs. Walton to Mrs. Ingalls to Jerry Seinfeld's mother to I Love Lucy to Mary Tyler Moore to Everybody Loves Raymond's Mom. Mom is a universal. Mom is a universal symbol of force of nature. Likely the giver of your life and greatest influence, both positive and maybe even negative at times. You can always learn from the one day I will and the one day I will never. I asked all of you to send me things your mama said. And you did. Quickly. Sam Ahern wrote, If I didn't do what mama asked me to do promptly, she would ask me again and add, make me know it. He said in particular that was about taking out the trash. So that was what the focus of that was. It was a phrase I had not heard before. Lynn Lancaster wrote, her mom would always say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Paula Jensen and Carrie Keena both shared the exact same quote. Their mothers both said, pretty is as pretty does. Kay Davison wrote, mama said there will be days like this. Really, my mama told me to always look for the good in people just like she did. She was a character, and as one of my cousins said, she was a force of nature. Tom Ramble wrote that his mother said, don't chew with your mouth open and get your elbows off the table. Great advice for lunch after this. <laughs> Laura Rhodes sent my request to their daughter Parker and Parker wrote, you are not wearing any lip color. You must wear it now that you're in the working world. <laughs> And then also, I can't wait until you have children one day. And that is every mother's sweetest revenge, isn't it? That's why grandmothers are so kind. They're just leaning back, grinning, just going, you deserve every bit of it. An anonymous person wrote, my mom always said there is so much good in the, wor in the worst of us and so much bad in the best of us that it hardly behooves any of us to talk about the rest of us. That's a pretty catchy little poem, isn't it? You want to hear it again? There is so much good in the worst of us and so much bad in the best of us that it hardly behooves any of us to talk about the rest of us. Mom always said when asked a point of fact, look it up in the dictionary or the encyclopedia. And I did and I learned it. Now we just Google it. <laughs> Timothy Butler wrote me from somewhere, I think around New Mexico, where he's traveling in a camper. And he said, literally, literally the morning when he woke up, he thought about his mom and then got my email. He said, I was literally tying my shoes this morning when out of nowhere, parentheses, HS, meaning Holy Spirit, not something else you might be thinking. He said, out of nowhere, I remembered that my mother taught me how to tie my shoes. 
So many small things that we all take for granted. Sharon Grice wrote, her mother always said, wash your hands. Sixty years before a pandemic, her mother knew the importance of cleanliness. Diane Rush wrote, mom always said, if you have a bad dinner, be sure you have a great dessert. That's what they will remember. <laughs> My friend Mary Glover wrote that his mom, Juanita Glover, used to say, don't build a house low on the land near a stream. Said it saved us once in Atlanta on really liking a house on Peachtree Battle Circle, but not buying it. Within one month, it was flooded by Peachtree Creek, four feet on the first floor, but also then hit by a tornado in the 70s, took off the roof about the same time. Mama said Mama was right. He also wrote that Mama wrote that said, you don't need to watch all of a basketball game. Tune in for the last two minutes. That's when it's won or lost. That is true. And Basketball, the last two minutes, last 45 minutes. They can split a second like no other sport. Laura West shared with me that her mom would say, money won't make you happy, but it keeps trouble from the doorstep. And her mother also would say, now listen to this, especially if you look out and see the cows, it's an object lesson. A cud-chewing cow and a gum-chewing girl, is there a difference now? Oh, I see there is a thoughtful look on the face of the cow. <laughs> Another person anonymously wrote me saying, My mother always gave me encouragement and helped me develop an inner confidence. She said, My sister was always the pretty sister, so I always felt a little insecure and self-conscious, but my mother always encouraged me by reminding me my beauty was inside and would never grow old or change. That's a great mom. That's a great line. It wasn't creating issues between the two daughters. It was just a mother's way of reminding me beauty is not always outward. I had never forgotten that and always took great strength from my mother's love and her sweet words. My mother had an incredible way of helping each of her daughters deal with life in ways that were perfect for each of us. We were always very different, and Mother knew how to help each of us as we needed it. She was an incredible soul. Colin Lyons wrote me, Don, maybe you can use this, but no worries if not. Here's a peek into my mom. She has been gone for 27 years now. When I had an opportunity to go out to California and be a governess, my mother said, if I didn't go, she would. Betty Jane Lindsay grew up in a small town outside of Memphis. She was never a helicopter mom. She always encouraged me to go and do and experience new places and things. She said, you can always come home, but first experience something different. One of her favorite ideas was always ask because your chances go up 50%. And it's for sure 100% no if you don't. She never tried to keep me close for her sake, but wanted my world to be bigger than hers. What fabulous gifts she gave me, the freedom to always want to be expanding on this road of life and to never be afraid to ask while on the journey. Mama said, Mama said, if you took a few moments right now, if you kind of closed your eyes, you could probably hear your mom's voice saying something from clean up your room to be home before nine. Do you have any money? Don't forget to call when you get there. All of the things our mother said taught us and shaped us and made us who we are. But of all the great things that were sent to me, there are things that I think are more bedrock, more built into the thread of our very DNA. See, because for the most part, I think, almost for each and every one of us, your mother, your mom, your mommy, your mama taught you Jesus loves me. Your mother, your mom, your mommy, your mama taught you now I lay me down to sleep. Your mother, your mom, your mother, your mama taught you to not eat anything off your plate until you had said grace. Your mother, your mom, your mommy, your mama taught you God is great. God is good. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8. Do not reject your mother's teaching. 
for they are fair garland for your head and pendants for your neck. We give thanks to God for our mothers. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lord Dismiss Us With, our, with Thy Blessing. We'll sing just the first verse. We know three days later the world changed forevermore and Mary's joy had to be greater than it even was at the manger. Remember your mothers. Remember the love they gave you, they shared with you, the things they taught you, and don't ever forget what they said. Take a moment to write some of those things down. Share it with a brother, a sister, a cousin, a niece, a nephew, or your own children so that they won't forget either. Now may the grace of our Heavenly Father, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may the love of God be with you and upon you all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.